Donna Noble. There's a Donna Noble somewhere in this library. Do you have the software to locate her position? Donna Noble has left the library. Donna Noble has been saved. What I know you from very well too, and my kids once yes. again, uh, they're freakishly fans of big fans of yours, uh, Donna Noble. Yeah, you were yeah. the doctor's companion. Yes, you I were was. one of the greatest doctor's oh, companions. Thank you so much. Yeah, and yeah. you did have that romantic thing with him, which was yes. really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was that whole experience? Because Doctor Who is. Is it big here? It's huge. Is it really? Right, mm. right. Well, I'm a fan. To give you an yeah. example, I've got, I've got TARDIS shoes and I do have wow. a sonic screwdriver. Wow. Don't judge me. A few t-shirts. Maybe a couple of little Daleks at home. So, you know, I'm sitting yeah. on the fan fence yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you're definitely on the spectrum. But the fandom. thing with fans, the Doctor Who fans, is that they are um, extreme fans. Right. How, do you, how do they react to you around the world? I honestly didn't realise just how big a thing Doctor Who was. I certainly didn't know while I was in it. And then I left it and that was it. And I think the only way you really get a glimpse into it is um, at conventions, at Comic-Con conventions, which I'd, I'd never been to until last year. Back of the neck. John Barrowman, who I guess you know as Captain Jack, mm. um, he said to me, come and do this convention. He said, oh, you know, David's going to do it and whatever. And I said, who's going to remember me? Who's going to remember that character when the show's moved on? And he went, just come. And it's incredible, the legacy that that show has. And as you say, the passion that the fans have and the, the love that they have of each and every character is really amazing. Yeah. You know you can fix that chameleon circuit if you just tried hot binding the fragment links and superseding the binary, 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 binary. Were the people there with t-shirts saying Donna Noble has left the library? Well, there were people dressed as Donna Noble. Is that a bit weird? weird? <laughs> of course it is. You can never, you can never make that normal, no. <laughs> and what was even weirder was, for every Donna Noble, there was a Lauren Cooper. And that blew my mind. So what, they'd obviously watched it, then go on, oh, Donna, and then researched you? Well, or they come to, you know, it's, it's strange because my show played on BBC America out there. So there was a, I guess there was a cultish kind of um, fan base. But then I went on to the American office, which is probably what most Americans would know me as, who, who would watch mainstream TV. I have one simple philosophy in business. If the seat is open, the job is open. It's how I came to briefly race a Formula One car. And so there's this kind of trident crossover, you know what I mean? That I, th I do think definitely the, the, the die-hard Doctor Who fans definitely came to my show through Doctor Who. But then I think the office people um, maybe then go, oh, what else did she do? The office people tend to know my comedy. But it's just a strange crossover and mix. What was that experience like working on The Office, oh, the American was, Office? Uh, I loved it. I loved it. It was so... It was just a blast because I was a massive fan of the show and I had no idea that was going to come, come my way. If you're going onto a show like The Office and you're a massive fan of it, is that harder, do you mm. think? It definitely adds a different element to it when you sit down in what I know as Michael Scott's desk and then my name's at it. It's like, that's a ridiculous turn of events, you know, but um, I, I loved it. Your mum is a huge fan of yours, isn't she? Does she tell everybody that you're on telly? Yeah, I mean, they kind of know, I suppose, but mainly because my mum's told them before. <laughs> um, but she, she is a big fan of me, but she's also the most surprised that anything sort of has happened, really. I mean, it was a shock to my mum to know that I was going into comedy because her response was, why? You know, it's like, Careful you don't instill me with too much confidence, Mum. Yeah, thanks, Mum. She's just strangely bewildered by the whole thing. <laughs> Where's one of the most unusual places you've been recognised? Just the kind of places where people will want to come and ask you for an autograph. Like, for example, in a swimming pool. Y you know, and where you think, well, I don't have a pen on me, <laughs> obviously. And then they provide one with a soggy old bit of paper <laughs> that they've waded across the pool to, to do. And you think, OK, then. I mean, it's disintegrating <laughs> as I'm writing on it, but it's, you know. So what's next for you? I mean, what's on the bucket list still to tick off career-wise? Oh, uh, well, every, everything and anything, really. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's not... Um, there's loads of things I'd like to do and, and love to do. And I'm um, going to hopefully work with David again, David Tennant, Ooh. again on a show. There's a Nan film in the pipeline as well. A Nan film? A Nan film, yeah. Can't wait for that yeah. one. Hey, well, it's been absolutely lovely Thank having you so a chat much, with you. Thank, Thank you so much. Pleasure. We'll see you in November. Thank you.